You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcasts, on Netroots Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There is a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for the week of March 29th, 2024. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where suddenly there's something nice to say about Alabama, other than our kids were born there. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Hey, Blue Gal. Hey, Drift Glass. Yeah, uh, this week, you should all know the professional left was in the news in that I got a mention on the Stephanie Miller show. Drift Glass uh, tweets, up next week on Meet the Press, Kristen Walker interviews COVID-19 to find out what's next for this famous influencer. <laughs> it's funny. It's funny. funny. We made it, honey. We <laughs> made it. Yay. That was a treat. A lot of people let us know via email and Twitter. And like, oh, my God, Steph. Steph mentioned Drift Glass, read, read a Drift Glass tweet. Aww. And it was a clever tweet, as they so often are. Well, thank you. I try. So congratulations. <laughs> Uh, so, yes, we were in the news this week. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll take it. But you know who's not in the national news this week, Drift Glass? Mm-hmm. Nikki Haley. That's right. Not a peep since she shut down her campaign three weeks ago and is still getting votes in Republican primaries. <laughs> <laughs> it's a miracle. Uh, so let's check in with Haley voters and uh-huh. find out what's become of them since their candidate quit. Cool. This is from... The Atlanta Journal-Constitution, quote, Haley's Georgia voters likely to follow party's lead, vote Trump. In her bid to be the Republican nominee for president, former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley drew votes from both Democratic and Republican voters as she positioned herself as an alternative to former President Donald Trump and a more likely candidate to defeat President Joe Biden. With Haley out of the race, An Atlanta Journal-Constitution analysis of votes cast in the March 12th presidential primary found no clear evidence of whom the majority of Haley supporters likely will support in November. But some political scientists say those voters are likely to vote for Trump if they vote for president at all. Kind of sounds like something I've been saying lately. It does. Uh, By and large, quote, by and large, the number one factor when we consider vote intentions is partisanship, said Jeffrey Glass, a lecturer in the political science department at the University of Georgia. I think those Nikki Haley supporters are as likely to vote for Donald Trump as to not vote. And I suspect those are both more likely than voting for Joe Biden in 2024. Again, this is exactly what I've said. They're either yep. going to line up behind Trump, or if they can't stomach it, they're going to stay home. And that is absolutely devastating for down ballot. Yeah, it's not a win for the Democrats. It's no. It could be a, I mean, it would be twice as good if they voted for Biden, but yes. it's still half as good if they just stay home. Just, just stay, stay home, home. Mm-hmm. especially if you're running as a challenger, a Republican challenger for a Senate seat. Yep. Like they're in Pennsylvania and in Ohio. Uh and 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 I was gonna say at Arizona, but never mind. Yeah. No. <laughs> All right. Uh, continuing on with this article from the Atlanta Journal Constitution, Cami Nail—that's her real name, Cami Nail—a Fulton County volunteer for Haley's campaign is not enthusiastic about Trump being the Republican nominee, but she still plans to vote for him in November. Hmm. I would love to have a candidate that doesn't have the baggage that this candidate has. Absolutely, she said. There's no perfect candidate. So you have to go with who will support the majority of your values. What are her values? One Fucking one porn, stars, yeah, fucking porn stars and cheating the tax man. Yes. Hawking. And stealing from your donor base. Yeah, apparently. Uh, Tom Bell Chairman of the real estate investment firm Mesa Capital Partners endorsed Haley and donated to her campaign. He did not vote for Trump or Biden in 2020 and said that he would not vote for either candidate in the general election. Now, this is this is this next line is the core of our podcast. Just Uh let this sink in. 
the way I look at it, I'm a real Republican. And <laughs> mm-hmm. Sure, of course. No true I'm Scotsman. I'm a real Republican. No true Scotsman would ever vote for Donald Trump. <laughs> and the yeah. Republican Party that Trump has created is something very different from what I would subscribe to. He said, unquote. Now, again, pay attention to that last sentence. I'm a real Republican, and the Republican Party that Trump's created is something very different from what I subscribe to. Because who is a real Republican or a real conservative? And who gets to decide who's a real Republican or a real conservative has been an ongoing fight for a long time. But it really broke into the open during the 2016 campaign. And Tom Bell, he's probably going to write in Dutch Reagan, yeah, you know, sure, the, the corpse of, of Ronald Reagan. Absolutely. You know, Georgia white guys who are chairman of real estate investment firms definitely feel entitled to decide who's a real Republican or a real conservative. Yeah. And I got to correct Tom, good old Tom, friend of mine, friend of the pod, Tom there, for just on one item. Yeah. Donald Trump did not create your Republican Party. Ah. Your Republican Party manifested Donald yeah. Trump. Your party yeah. gave itself over to Donald Trump. And if you didn't notice that, that we are capable of that, Tom, maybe that's on you. Maybe mm-hmm. that's not on Trump. Now, several years ago, as some of you might recall, who are readers of my blog, I did like 10 or 15 issues of a parody magazine, which I called True Conservative, a monthly journal of self-regard. And I use that to poke a stick at this really very stupid fight on the right. Everyone on the right was angry and panicked over who was and who was not a member of the true faith. Now, earlier this week, you might recall, if you're a regular listener, we did a whole thing on the Ronald McDaniel fiasco at NBC. So if you're inclined to do so, go ahead and listen to that. That's fine. We will take doubles and triples any way we can get them. But there is one more really important facet to the disaster that we should talk about. And that's why they hired her in the first place. And her accidental confession during her first and last 20 minutes on Meet the Press. And all of that has everything to do with who is a real Republican and who is not. So in furtherance of that goal, we're going to do a little exercise. You and I together and the rest of our listeners are going to do a little exercise, a disaster site detective exercise. (laughs) Disaster sites. A disaster. We're going to pick through the rubble. (laughs) <laughs> of, of what is happening at NBC. And we're going to see how we get from the systemic both sides do it, both siderist fetish that infects the entire mainstream media all the way to Ronald McDaniel fiasco and the shock waves that that fiasco is still causing. Yeah. I mean, this does remind us of every job either one of us have had oh, God, with yes. a managerial chain of command over us. Yeah. But, uh, The fact is that everything, and I mean everything that we've been talking about regarding politics and the media for 790 episodes. episodes, 14 years, baby. Yeah. Is culminated with the Ronald Romney McDaniel NBC fiasco. Mm -hmm. So let's start with asking the question, why do networks rely so heavily on panels of talking heads? to fill their hours of coverage. Mm -hmm. Why not do like journalism? Why not have deep investigative journalism and then have journalists write about and talk about what they found? Now, they do do that every once in a while. They'll have someone on from another outlet like Daily Beast. Sure. And talk about what they found. But they don't hire large groups of journalists to do work for them. No, if, if, there's hire... like a, if there's like a bridge collapse right. in Baltimore, they'll bring on structural engineers. They'll bring on sure. experts to talk about that specific issue. But generally, that's not what they do. And they, certainly they do... not for political coverage. No, no, absolutely not. Yep. So uh, why do they do this? They do the talking heads thing because it's cheaper. And here Drift Glass has very intelligently inserted into our show a clip from HBO's Chernobyl. Timestamp. 9.52. But skimping on actual journalism and relying on talking heads and horse race coverage is not enough to make an entire network melt down like it did this week. Mm -hmm. 
as we learned this very week, there are about a billion executive vice presidents and <laughs> acting vice presidents at NBC, all with important titles and all with at least one hand on the wheel and all talking off <laughs> off the record with Puck, apparently. <laughs> And since causes of disasters like what's happening at NBC right now are complex, we open our hymnals to, quote, from how complex systems fail, being a short treatise on the nature of failure, how failure is evaluated, how failure is attributed to proximate cause, and the resulting new understanding of patient safety by Richard I. Cook, M.D., Cognitive Technologies Laboratory, the University of Chicago, unquote. Because we here at The Professional Left are always willing to go the extra mile for you, the listener. <laughs> Damn right. We do the deep research that Keith uh, Olbermann won't tell you about. <laughs> we'll go to the University of Chicago to disaster studies and tell you why this happened. Now, this mm -hmm. is from that report, point number three. It has many, many points inside. This is point number three, quote, Catastrophe requires multiple failures. Single point failures are not enough. Overt catastrophic failure occurs when small, apparently innocuous failures join to create opportunity for a systemic accident. Each of these small failures is necessary to cause the catastrophe, but only the combination is sufficient to permit failure. Put another way, there are many more failure opportunities than overt system accidents, unquote. Got it? All right, this is from point number seven from the same report. Quote, post-accident attribution to a root cause is fundamentally wrong. Because overt failure requires multiple faults, there is no isolated cause of an accident. There are multiple contributors to accidents, each of them necessarily insufficient in itself to create an accident. Only jointly are these causes sufficient to create an accident. Indeed, it is the linking of these causes together, together, that causes, I'm sorry, creates the, the circumstances required for the accident, unquote. So, long story short, a lot of things other than the network being run by cheapskates, who'd rather do panels and process stories than actual journalism, had to go wrong for the McDaniel meltdown to happen, starting with their both ciderist fetish. Now, we've covered this dozens of times over the past 14 years, so there's no point in belaboring it here. Suffice it to say, pretty much every problem with the mainstream media can be traced back to their obsession with false equivalences. It has been such a suffocating and all-pervasive pathology in the mainstream press that this is one of the jokes I wrote back when I was a mere commentator at the news blog. This is 20 years ago. This is 2004, me as a commentator at the now defunct and lamented lost news blog. Question, if Dick Cheney were caught red-handed, tossing burning kittens at homeless veterans from the White House lawn, what would be the first three words out of Cokie Roberts' mouth? Answer, but the Democrats. So, what comes after their obsession with both siderism? Mm -hmm. What comes after that is the way they define both sides. Right. To start with, let's turn to a guy named Steve Krakauer, who the Hill, and by the way, the Hill lets anybody right there. Except us, you know, but yeah. In, it, well, in D.C. If yeah. you have a job in D.C., they'll, they'll let anybody write for you. Mm -hmm. uh, the Hill tells us that Steve Krakauer is a, quote, News Nation contributor, speaking of they'll let anybody there, mm -hmm. uh, is the author of Uncovered, How the Media Got Cozy with Power, abandoned its principles, and lost the people, unquote. He is also the editor of his own newsletter and podcast, mm -hmm. which, if that's all we have to go on, tells us very little about Mr. Krakauer. But we at the Professional Left Podcast went a little deeper. Mm -hmm. And we found out that his main bread and butter job is executive producer of The Megan Kelly Show on Sirius XM. Da, 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 da. With that in mind, his opinion piece in The Hill is called Three Ways NBC Flunked the Ronald McDaniel Test Makes Perfect Sense. Quote, this episode perfectly encapsulates the state of both our political landscape and the corporate media. It exposed the fraud of the so-called journalists at NBC like Chuck Dodd, 
who was one of the first to take to the airwaves on Sunday to blast the hiring. If Ronna McDaniel, a fairly benign mainstream political lifer who happens to be a Republican, is unacceptable at NBC, what does that say for the mission of providing the audience with a diverse set of viewpoints? Sure. Yeah. Is Mike Pence unacceptable? Nikki Haley? Surely an actual current Trump supporter like approximately half the country. Uh, I have a little question about your math there. Uh-huh. Uh, would be persona non grata, unquote. Now, did you get all that? Mm-hmm. McDaniel? Just happens to be run of the mill Republican, just, just, just a fluke, like yeah. having red hair or being a Cubs fan. It's so unfair, you know, as opposed to an actual current Trump supporter. Now, if you're still not clear, let's, let's bring in Elon Musk. Sure. Reliable source <laughs> all day long. <laughs> Quote, NBC just hired and immediately fired Ronna McDaniel because the team refused to let even one Republican join them. That's how biased they are, unquote. This may come as a shock to all of us who has watched recently former Republicans and current Republicans completely colonize cable television. Mm -hmm. But this is absolutely the GOP's post-Trump catechism. Being a Republican and being a Trump supporter are now 100% interchangeable. If you are not a Trump supporter, you are not a Republican. They are one and the same. And I will say, and I, you didn't have this in our notes, Drift Glass, but I have a feeling that part of the problem with, with the Ronna McDaniel meltdown and, and the post-accident attribution to a root cause situation mm -hmm. is that there is a buildup in the reactor to the fact that there are so many Republicans on MSNBC. Probably. And now... Here comes an insurrectionist. Right. And the already... reaction on social media was so fast and so swift and so widespread on a Sunday mm -hmm. that, and over a weekend, that, uh, you know, it was like a nuclear reaction. And I think it was simply that buildup of, you know, you've made us swallow having Michael Steele as a host, you've made us take on, uh, all the Republicans that yeah, are on Charlie CNN Sykes, and Rick yeah, Wilson, Charlie Tom Sykes, Nichols, all of them, all, all of them. All, it's, a, it's a huge list. I, we we yeah. can spend the rest of this podcast just naming Republicans who now have, now have, have a job. Colonized. Yeah. And, and that doesn't even take into consideration the New York Times op-ed page, the Washington Post. And Joe op -ed Scarborough page. having his own four hours every yeah. morning. Yeah. Bill Crystal. Bill Crystal is now, you know, leader of the resistance, according yep. to the right. So, yep. Yep. yeah. So, uh, you know, th I think that explosion is part of it. There, there are multiple contributors to accidents. Mm -hmm. But one of the reasons the explosion was so fast was we had honed our reaction. Right. And now it reached a tipping point. It reached, it reached that point where there's no more water in the tank. No, no. <laughs> it's just going to melt down. And I think we can also take, you and I and our listeners can take a little credit for making both sides do it a punchline yeah. by, by yeah. repetition over the course of 14 years and longer, yeah. actually, and to the point where everybody knows the game now. There's well, no and everybody anymore. knew that on January 5th. That's right. And then January 6th comes along mm -hmm. and it's like, well, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, and, and the need to patch that over and pretend that we're back to normal with a Republican party when clearly we're not. No, but that uh, isn't how, that isn't how Republicans or the mainstream media score these things, is it? This is no, not, it's how, not. No. no. And so anyone who does not swear fealty in 2024 to dear leader is not a Republican. They've decided this mm -hmm. You're not a in, Republican. in, in the RNC. Uh, and Laura Trump today saying, you can trust me. I'm Donald Trump's uh, daughter-in-law. <laughs> And everyone went, nope. Um, and all these recently former Republicans who are now heroes of the resistance that you see all over cable television, mm -hmm. they're not Republicans. Nope. Even though that's been their, their party their whole life. They're not Republicans at all. They don't even count as three-fifths of a Republican drift class. Mm -hmm. 
And since creatures like Liz Cheney and Michael Steele and Mike Pence can no longer be counted as Republicans and, and Nikki Haley. Right. Uh, they can no longer count as one side of both sides do it. Mm -hmm. Instead, they are now something else, something alien, something liberal. Oh, yeah. they're, you know, he's just a, a liberal rhino. Um, ergo, the only people who now qualify as Republicans are election denying coup plotting MAGA traitors mm -hmm. loyal to Donald Trump. Therefore, using geometric logic, the networks must hire themselves a passel of election denying coup plotting MAGA traitors. They must hire Trumpers. Mm -hmm. If they don't hire Trumpers, they're not covering both sides. They're not hiring Republicans. Therefore, no. nope. Mm -hmm. There's not both sides. And they want to pretend that they're fair and even handed. They've got to have Trumpers on the screen. Absolutely. And um, now we have arrived at the moment when <laughs> cascade failure has become both inevitable and catastrophic. So we're going to go back to HBO's Chernobyl for one more little timestamp. <clears throat> the first part of the rods that enter the core are the graphite tips. And when they do, the reaction in the core, which had been rising, skyrockets. Every last molecule of liquid water instantly converts to steam, which expands and ruptures a series of fuel rod channels. The control rods in those channels can move no further. The graphite tips are fixed in position, endlessly accelerating the reaction. Chernobyl Reactor 4 is now a nuclear bomb. First, because McDaniel has an unbroken record of failure as RNC chair, and her name is now radioactive inside the conservative ecosystem, she has to now go looking for a gig inside the liberal media. Oh, no. <laughs> this is from Dylan Byers at Puck News. Quote, the next day, however, Budoff Brown reached out to McDaniel with a new development. Rashida Jones, the president of MSNBC, was very interested in having McDaniel appear as a contributor on her network as well. That makes for both NBC and MSNBC. Was that something McDaniel would consider? McDaniel said she would. In the next few days, McDaniel hires Mark McGrath, an agent at Creative Artists Agency, CAA, who led negotiations with NBC talent chief Jessica Curtily, unquote. Now, because McDaniel was now going to appear on both NBC and MSNBC, they sweetened her offer by bumping it up to $300,000 a year for two years. What's important to know at this point is that everyone was bidding for McDaniel. ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN, everybody. I don't know if PBS was in on it, but maybe they were. Who knows? They, tote bags just don't cut it in this kind of deal, though, so they probably <laughs> couldn't get her. Because everyone accepted the Republican framing right? That only someone who supported Donald Trump unreservedly could now be counted as a real Republican and plugged into the both siderist algorithm that they all fucking worship. In mid-March, McDaniel accepted their offer and NBC began prepping her for a March 24th debut on Meet the Press. And again, we turn to Puck, thanks in large part to a screenshot by the inimitable Josh Marshall. Yeah, oh. Puck, Puck has a really hard uh, paywall. paywall. Yeah. They, they're very yep. stiff about that. So Josh yeah. Marshall took a few pictures and I've turned. So anything wrong with this quote is my fault. I've, I've typed it wrong, but this is mostly true. Quote, still no one on the NBC leadership team anticipated the open rebellion that took place this week. In fact, bringing McDaniel to 30 Rock had been part of a nearly two month long effort that was spearheaded by Budoff Brown and her boss. NBC News President Rebecca Blumenstein with buy-in from NBC Universal Group Chairman Cesar Conde and his deputies at both NBC News and MSNBC. Like many news executives navigating this hyper-partisan political era, Budoff Brown and Blumenstein had been eager to find, Jesus, rest in this phrase just for a moment, semi-palatable conservative voices who could offer insight into the Trump campaign and widen the aperture of perspectives on election night panels, panels, and Sunday morning roundtables, roundtables. They saw <laughs> McDaniel as that voice, and over the course of the recruiting process, Conde and several of his deputies 
embraced that idea as well, unquote. So here are all these goddamn executives patting each other on the back. We got a good get. Hey, she's perfect. Yeah. perfect for the job. And that is when everything went boom. Yeah. But the boom, we've talked about the boom. The boom we right. talked about on Monday. The issue, the thing we really want to talk about is that at no point along the way did any of the senior executives, not only at CBS, ABC, CNN, NBC, or even MSNBC, but also CAA, mm -hmm. even the agent didn't see this as anything other than a terrific idea. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. And even if they had any doubts, it never crossed the mind of any of the network presidents or vice presidents or junior presidents or assistant presidents or presidents in charge of politics which get, give me a break, uh, that if it went south, that it wouldn't just be a giving Hugh Hewitt his own show mistake, mm -hmm. right? Or giving Greta Van Susteren her own show mistake. We'll just cancel it and right. move on, right? Yeah, it's not, it's from... not, you know, we cancel shows all the time. If she doesn't work out, she doesn't work out. Yeah, speed bump. That's all it is. We'll yeah. cruise that through. Uh -huh. This was not going to be a seniors executives losing their jobs disaster. No. Uh, it's not going to be a getting laughed at by name on a podunk podcast like the professional left as they're escorted out of the building by security type disaster. No. Oh, guess what? That it is. Never, that could never happen. That's just crazy talk. Sorry, Conde. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For these senior executives, it's all just filler between commercials. Their job is to get more people to watch by any means necessary to increase ad, re ad revenue. Ratings lead to ad revenue leads to money, leads to success. That's it. That's their only objective. And so That's you all. keep programming cheap. You put as many commercials on as you can, mm -hmm. and you try to get viewers, especially Republican viewers, to watch your shows. And by any means necessary. Yep. And McDaniel herself gave the game away on the air. Mm -hmm. And I, I think she, because she was innocent of it, she, she didn't understand herself what was wrong with her being there. Mm -hmm. She explained that the RNC, when she worked there a minute ago, had paid her to play a certain role and say certain things, like a hooker. So she did. You know, you dress up in costume, you say the things we want you to say, and they pay me money. That's the, that's the whole world. But now she's here. Now she's at NBC on NBC's payroll. So she can play a different role and say different words because it's just a game. It's just a show. Now, weirdly enough, I think McDaniel is actually the aggrieved party here. It pains me to say so. But she understood this game as well as every executive at every network that was bidding for her services. They all understood what the deal was. All of them understand that all of this, all of it, the media, the politics, the marketing, everything, it's all just a show. It's a show with performers paid to play one part today and a different part tomorrow. And words like journalism and democracy are just words people say as part of their role in the game. But it's just a game. After all, the networks are already overloaded with recently former Republicans who found it very convenient and very profitable just to switch parts. So no one flinched at the idea of having one more Republican to fill one more chair. Mm -hmm. And as I said before, if Meet the Press had merely interviewed Ronna McDaniel on Sunday morning and not hired her, no one except the usual liberal bloggers would have raised a stink or said a peep about it. It's the fact that they hired her that was the deal. Yep. This is from Oliver Darcy at Reliable Sources. And again, let this sink in. Quote, what is Brian Roberts going to do? Who is Brian Roberts? He's the head of Comcast. <laughs> so this is going way up the chain. He's the boss of all bosses. Yep. Yeah. The Comcast boss is watching an unceasing five alarm fire rage at 30 Rock scarring the reputation of NBC News and threatening to consume multiple parts of the Caesar Conde run NBC Universal News Group. It's difficult to succinctly summarize the disastrous state of affairs at the news division. You know what, Driftless, you and I did that. We did that. We did it. We just <laughs> did it. Given that multiple engines are failing simultaneously, but one thing is clear, Conde has lost control of his organization prompting industry insiders to wonder how he continues to remain in his role as chairman of the NBC News Group. In the words of one veteran media executive I spoke to Wednesday, it's inconceivable that he should. 
Instead of extinguishing the inferno that broke out on Friday, the actions of Conde and the NBC executives he has empowered have only hosed gasoline on it. While it was immediately obvious that the announcement was not going over well with the network staff, Conde froze still, digging his heels in the, and then Oliver Darcy says, Miami? Question mark. Because he was doing all of this remotely. Digging his heels in the Miami sand and refusing to dump McDaniel until after his top television personalities, including Chuck Todd and Rachel Maddow, went on the air and excoriated the hire. By the time Conde moved to sever ties with McDaniel on Tuesday evening, however, the crisis had spiraled far out of control and given way to even larger problems for the network boss. Byers reported that Kerry Budoff Brown, NBC News Senior Vice President of Politics, and she makes a lot more than three hundred thousand dollars a year, by the way. I'm thinking Ronna McDaniel does. money times multiples. Yeah, Ronna McDaniel money was silver Christian money. You know, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Budoff Brown had recruited. This is so amazing. Recruited Republican Richard Walters to advance conservative pushback on social media against Chuck Dodd. Brown confirmed to Byers that she had a conversation with Richard Walters and asked if McDaniel had supporters who could speak on behalf of her being an NBC News contributor. But Budolf Brown insisted that she never discussed what to say, how to say it, or who to focus on. Because As if all she that said, makes it okay. All she said was to the air or someone in the room, yeah. will no one rid me of this meddlesome Chuck Todd? Right. Mm-hmm. Right. And can do you know anybody who could go on social media and slam my employee Chuck Todd? Yeah. I'm not saying now, how we're to not do it. defending Chuck Todd long term oh, in no. any way. No, 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 no. But this is such a But complete... this is knife twisting inside the house. Yeah. This is, this is them realizing that the, the house is burning down right. and everyone's trying to save their jobs now. Everyone's uh-huh. looking for uh-huh. someone to throw on a grenade. And there's but too many grenades to There's to, too many grenades. To and, and she's deciding that since social media is slamming this decision, mm-hmm. she'll find people on social media to push back and that'll make it okay. Sure. You know, you can buy Russian trolls for like a nick. <laughs> so just call do that. Putin, right. Uh-huh. Regardless, staffers inside NBC News are enraged at the fact an executive would have engaged in such behavior. You think? Inside Conde's inner circle, Stephen Labatton, executive vice president of communications, it's just bullshit. All of it is just bullshit offices with big salaries. Mm -hmm. He is also facing an accusation of professional misconduct. Amid the crisis, Labatton bashed his colleagues over at MSNBC, rebuking the hosts in a profane manner, Byers reported, citing a source. Labatton denied making the remark and suggested a disgruntled McDaniel had leaked it after being fired. So you might as well just stab her in the back, too. Jesus Christ. Over at MSNBC, Rashida Jones, president of the network... did not escape unscathed. Byers reported that not only did Jones initially not object to McDaniel's hiring, but that she expressed interest in having the election denier on the progressive cable network. Unquote. Well, it does seem like Rashida Jones had better instincts than some of her fellow network presidents in that her immediate reaction to the fire was to say, oh no, she's not going to be on MSNBC. Uh, She, well, she didn't she say lied. <laughs> she didn't say no. I th- think there was some parsing of the phrase, like not no. required to or not not no. mandated or something like that. It was a little bit parsed, but but the, it was a the, lie because she had been, you know, pleasant about it when it yes. when the discussions were going on for two months. She had been part of the courting process, getting this woman on board. Two months of courting this woman, and, and so now it's the last reel of the usual, oh, not the usual suspects, the uh, reservoir dogs. Everyone's pointing yeah. guns at everybody else. Mm-hmm. Everybody's like, don't put, put the gun. No, no. And it's going to end in a bloodbath. Of mm-hmm. course it is. Because all these people care about are their jobs and their offices and, and their, their stock money. options. Yep. That's it. Yep, and, that's it. and the fact that they have a really cool title. And if they get yeah. caught in this mess, first of all, if they get caught in the riptide on this thing, you know, they're going to find them something else to do. Because none of these people ever end up 
No, at they'll McDonald's. wind up at CNN. No. <laughs> they'll they wind never up at News Nation, right? They never end up at McDonald's <laughs> upselling apple pies. You know, no. that's, that's no. not their fate. Because sucking up to Republicans, no matter how dangerously deranged the Republican Party had become, was always the plan, Blue Gal. Mm -hmm. This is from Semaphore. Quote, NBC braces for the backlash to the backlash after hiring and firing top Republican. Oh, God. I, mean, I know. It's just... This is this this is our free and fair press. These are the yeah. people who are going to save democracy, right? NBC News' dramatic hiring and firing of a former RNC chairwoman this week threatens to undo years of repositioning itself as friendly to Republican officials and viewers, unquote. That's the thing. That's the deal. And it's it's been happening right in front of us, and we have been talking about it mm -hmm. all this time. They are Definitely putting themselves in a place to be friendly to Republicans, to, to mm -hmm. no matter how crazy they get. This is why, as we said at the top of this show about five years ago, the power to define who is a true Republican and who is not is so vitally important. A week ago, Ronna McDaniel was a filthy liberal as far as the Trump Republican Party was concerned, right? Today, yeah. she is a noble martyr to the cause. Yeah. As Steve M. said at his site, No More Mr. Nice Blog, friend of the blog, friend of the pod. Quote, you might think McDaniel is going through a difficult time, what with the many attacks on her credibility from major on-air figures at NBC and MSNBC. But think about it. McDaniel was ditched by Donald Trump and was no longer seen as sufficiently loyal to MAGA, yet now she is a right-wing martyr. That's very, very good for her post-RNC career. A week ago, MAGA Nation considered McDaniel an insufficiently loyal has-been. Pretty much a Democrat, if you ask me. Mm -hmm. Now she's seen as a victim of the all-powerful liberal mob. After all this, she can get more money from, I assume, Fox News than she ever was going to get from NBC. And she'll get to keep the NBC money. And maybe she'll sue NBC anyway. She's yeah. a walking, yeah. talking, bloody shirt now, like Donald Trump. This will turbocharge her career the way indictments turbocharge Trump's post-presidency. Thanks a lot, NBC, for giving her this boost. Too bad about those two German courtiers, will you? They got a lucky break yesterday. They were just two German clerks. Today, they're they on a dead. And before we do a news roundup, let me just read a tweet from Dean Baker. I imagine if the major outlets... And by the way, this is from March 25th, so this is days ago... I imagine if the major outlets were not owned and controlled by people who would pay lower taxes with Donald Trump back in the White House, they would be pointing out that four years ago, Trump openly said he would withhold pandemic assistance from states where their leaders were not nice to him. Mm -hmm. These jackasses in their corner offices and their titles are either hoping for the Trump tax cuts to return or just hedging their bets yeah. so that their network won't be in the noose right? if somehow Trump gets reelected. If Trump gets reelected, they can send Ronna McDaniel out to the crowd and she'll right. vouch for them. Right. You know, take them. Right. Take, take CBS. Take, take ABC. Mm -hmm. NBC will not we hurt We hired Ronna McDaniel, so right. you know we're yep. okay. Except, you know. And whoops. so all their bullshit about defending democracy and you know, the the freedom of the press and the, you know, the Nicole Wallace outrage hour that they have on the air to air Sky Rizzy commercials. Mm -hmm. No one in her boss's C-suite gives a shit. Believes a word of it. They don't believe a fucking word of nope. it at all. And this is proof. This is the absolute proof that none of that is, is, uh, that all of that's bullshit. All on of that bullshit. note. Yeah. Let's do a news roundup dovetailing right into this. Here's a fun fact about Comcast, the company that owns NBC and MSNBC. Uh -huh. From Rebecca Crosby and Judd Legume at Popular Info, an article titled, These 50 Companies Have Donated Over $23 Million to Election Deniers Since January 6, 2021. Quote, Comcast, $787,500 donated to 91 election deniers. After January 6, 2021, Comcast pledged to suspend all of our political contributions to those elected officials who voted against certification of the Electoral College votes. 
which will give us the opportunity to review our political giving policies and practices, unquote. Comcast condemned the insurrection in a statement, saying, the peaceful transition of power is a foundation of Americans democ- America's democracy. This year, that transition will take place among some of the most challenging conditions in modern history and against the backdrop of the appalling violence we witnessed at the U.S. Capitol last week. Since January 6, 2021, however, Comcast has donated $787,500. Gosh, that's almost three times what they were paying Ron and McDaniel. I know. To 83 election deniers on the federal level and eight election deniers on the state level, Mm -hmm. unquote. I'm sure they donated to Democrats, too, because both sides. Yeah, you, you, you... Bet across the board. We don't want anybody deregulating the cable industry or re-regulating the cable industry. Bet on every horse because one of them is going to finish. And that one will be beholden to you because you gave them money. Mm -hmm. Now, at the other end of the political spectrum, we have this statement from President Joseph Robinette Biden about the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse in Baltimore. Quote, I directed my team to move heaven and earth to reopen the port and rebuild the bridge as soon as humanly possible. It's my intention that the federal government will pay for the entire cost of reconstructing that bridge, and I expect Congress to support my effort, unquote. I, my, I will say my initial reaction to waking up to that bridge thing was shock, and, you know, just the images were just horrible. Yeah, just the, just the, the disaster itself and, was and horrible. Two and a half hours later, I was emailing the team at Crooks and Liars and saying, this is just another opportunity for Joe Biden to be compassionate, competent, and yeah. get it done. And this is also another opportunity for everyone on the right to lose their fucking minds and blame yeah. it on vaccinations and DEI and race. <laughs> Laura Loomer, I don't even want, want to say what she said. No, it was don't. It was horrifying. It was just horrifying. But that's who they are. They spring into action like, like I don't know, grave maggots. Every yeah. time there's a disaster... They come on a feeding frenzy to find some way to blame it on immigrants or brown people, yep. the border. Or vaccinations Baltimore, or the liberals. The yeah. border. Yes. Yeah. Right. Right. This just in from the Minnesota Star Tribune. A judge is evicting Mike Lindell's My Pillow Company from its Minnesota warehouse. Oh. Womp womp. Womp womp. Uh, one day after he compared himself to Jesus Christ, yes, that Jesus Christ, Trump began selling $60 Trump endorsed Bibles. It is advertised as the only Bible endorsed by Donald Trump. Yes, Donald Trump is now hawking Bibles to pay for his legal fees because he got caught bribing a porn star to keep quiet about having sex with him while his wife was recovering from childbirth. Blaspheming psychopath. (laughs) Blaspheming psychopath who also wants everyone to have a happy Holy Week. Have a happy Holy Week, everyone. Enjoy the crucifixion. (laughs) Whatever that means. By the way, I heard there's a special one-time offer. If you buy one Bible now, you get a second Corinthian absolutely free. Two Corinthians, yeah. Two Corinthians yeah. free. No, just you just pay for shipping and handling. That's all you do. It just makes me barf. Speaking as a believing Christian, yep. to the extent that I am, uh huh. Christ is risen. And this guy, <laughs> what was the thing we said earlier this week? Buried this orange... Orange heathen needs to be buried under the jail. Yeah. <laughs> Bury this orange heathen under the jail. Yep. This week, Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene spouted some incomprehensible gibberish about how her motion to vacate the speaker's chair was just a warning. But she also says it's time to find a new speaker. Benghazi uh, Cylindra tan suit. Right. Birth, birth certificate. Birth certificate. Death panels. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> My brain is full of bumper stickers that are all stupid and crazy. Now, on a more, well, not serious, but more somber note, Joe Lieberman is dead. He fell down and he died. And Joe Lieberman was a terrible person. And we have nothing to add but this from Macbeth, Act 1, Scene 4. Nothing in his life became him like the leaving it, unquote. Trump got a massive infusion of wealth from a shell company spending billions on his garbage social media site. Mm -hmm. This is an opportunity for foreign money to bribe Donald Trump once again. Mm -hmm. Breaking news. uh, Today's Trump's pump and dump meme stock 
closed at 61.96. It had opened earlier today at 69.70. And we hope the Securities and Exchange Commission is watching. Yeah, this is this is their job, isn't it? There's a whole organization devoted to this sort of thing. To, isn't there? to fraudulent <laughs> stock trades, yes. Now, you might remember Trump White House lawyer Ty Cobb as the weirdo with the strange beard and the mustache. But former White House lawyer Ty Cobb also this week ripped into Judge Eileen Cannon for her handling of the classified document case. Quote, it's really remarkable some of the things she's done. Just fundamentally unhinged, unquote. That's I think there's going to be a head of lettuce next to the picture of Eileen Cannon's. They all yeah. suck. They all suck. They're all terrible. She, she, her time is limited now. She's on yeah. a clock because 11th Circuit is is conservative, yeah. but they don't put up with the kind of bullshit that just embarrasses the entire legal profession. Mm-hmm. And that's what, when, she, when she says, now I want both of you to come up with jury instructions and I'm going to pick. That's right. Okay. It's not their job. Either no. one of them. That's not Trump's lawyer's job. <clears throat> That's not how things work at That's all. It's not how things work at all. No. She's not a good judge. No. Uh, now, Candace Owens either left in a huff or was fired from the Daily Wire after months of feuding with co-founder Ben Shapiro. Um, the jokes about her <laughs> appearing on MSNBC sometime <laughs> soon were all over Twitter. Um mm-hmm. Rumor has it that her virulent public anti-Semitism was too much even for Rat Boy Ben. I know. Go which figure. Is, which is something. Remember, Candace Owens was paid approximately $35,000 by the Sangamon County Republican Party mm-hmm. to come to our very town to talk mm-hmm. to area Republicans to raise money. So trust us when we say, look, if you really need someone to tell you what's going on in the GOP and what's going on with Republican voters, we can tell you. It's not a big secret. You don't need to hire the former RNC chair for $300,000 a year. Meanwhile, Republican Ken Buck says farewell. This is from Axios. Republican Ken Buck of Colorado on Thursday dealt one final blow to House Republican leadership one day before leaving Congress by signing the Democrats' foreign aid discharge petition. A quirk in House rules allows Buck's signature to count towards 218 until his district votes in a special election to replace him. The special election is scheduled for June 25th and is likely to result in a conservative replacement disinclined to support either discharge petition, unquote. Alaska Senator Lisa Murkowski says she won't rule out leaving the GOP. She doesn't want to support Trump, but I'm an independent. I'm an independent. No, I'll take it. I'll take it all day long. Yep, you want to be we'll an independent? Fine. Yeah. Marco diminish, Rubio. diminish the Republican Party in the Senate, please. Oh, yeah. No, that'd be great. Marco yeah. Rubio, about whom many of you have heard many bad things over the years, is now trying to blame Joe Biden for Russia's invasion of Ukraine. No kidding. Dumbest toast. We've always said that. Yep. Uh, we're going to quote from N- NBC News, despite uh-huh. this entire podcast, because right. this news is so terrific. Democrat wins Alabama special election in early test for IVF as a campaign issue. Yay! Marilyn Lands, who defeated Republican Teddy Powell, highlighted IVF and abortion rights. She even talked about her own abortion mm-hmm. in her campaign for a state house seat that had been held by the GOP. The special election was called after David Cole, a Republican who defeated Lands in 2022 by seven percentage points, pleaded guilty to a voter fraud charge last year and resigned. Yeah, there is voter fraud, and it's all Republicans. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, yeah, he he had to go. He had to go. Bye-bye now. Republicans hold a 75 to 27 vote advantage over Democrats in the Alabama State House. However, Lands won in a blowout. 63% to Powell's 37%. Thank you, postcards to voters. It makes a difference. It really it makes does a make difference. a difference. And the, and the other thing that makes a difference, and, and I'm so glad that this happened and got the attention it did, mm-hmm. because what you have in, with these blue dots in red states is discouragement. Mm-hmm. Yep. And not seeing a point in, in voting because it's, seven, you know, the state house is 75 to 27. It's hopeless. It's hopeless. But it's not. No, you're... you're. All you, oh, we have to turn out, and we have to turn out all our voters. 
you're, we're, and if you're they betting, stay home this year, right. this is this is the thing. You're betting uh, and, on the future. You're betting that yeah. at some point things always have gotten worse, but they can always get better. Things mm-hmm. change. And at some point, if the tide shifts, you will have established a nice blue beachhead mm-hmm. in a red state that is suddenly like, I'm not sure we want to do this anymore because right. this is really, really killing us literally and philosophically and mm-hmm. economically. Let's consider not voting for traitors and lunatics anymore. And then yeah. you've got a little or, beachhead. Or people that take away women's bodily autonomy. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it's worth it. Even if you're a little blue dot in a big red state and we hear you. Believe me, we live in Trump country. Oh, all we the hear time. You. We hear you and we're with you. Feel, now, I want you guys to feel surrounded by professional left love if you're, you're a blue dot in a red state. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That's And that won't cost you as much as a Trump Bible, really. Yeah. <laughs> Now, CPAC, Send your sixty dollars to the Professional Life Podcast instead of buying a Trump Bible. Thank and we'll you. Rip, we'll rip off a Gideon Bible from a whole local motel and mail it to you. How's that? <laughs> Actually, you can just go and get one for free. The Gideons give them away. Yes, they do. Um, CPAC's head clown Matt Schlapp paid five hundred thousand dollars—that's half a million dollars—to make his sex pest groping lawsuit go away. That's an expensive grope. It is. Tommy Laren is trying out a new conspiracy theory in which Democrats are to blame for January 6th. Yeah. Good luck with that. You and Marco Rubio, man. Yeah, man. On Twitter, White House Communications Director Ben LeBolt noted that the New York Times wrote 30 stories about the her report on Biden's age. So far, they have written zero stories about this. Quote, as President Biden visited five cities in a multi-day trip last week, former President Donald Trump was hardly seen in public, spending most of his time in South Florida, huddled in his basement like a whining little child. Trump has held just a single public campaign event since he locked up the Republican presidential nomination, unquote. One. One. Biden's out there, man. He's gone through, what, like eight swing states in in a week? And his his event with Obama and Clinton is going to raise $25 million. It is the highest... Uh, amount a single campaign event has raised ever, ever. for anyone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So no hope. Yeah. And we're loving this Biden campaign four years later thing. Are you yeah. better off than you were four years ago in response to conservative media whining about that? The Biden campaign and many other allies have begun posting videos of what Trump was actually doing four years ago. It is, as they say, a rich text. <laughs> Oh, and oh Drift Glass and I debated whether to include uh, audio of what Trump was saying four years ago. And I said, no, I don't no. want to hear that shit. No, but it's out there. Thank and God. You know, it is, you know what it is. Injecting you know what it is. bleach, all that crap. Yeah. I'm, I take no responsibility. Right. Withholding things. Withholding from things from blue states. Blue states yeah. and calling reporters who ask basic questions stupid. Yeah. You know, bad. You're a bad reporter for asking. That's what you're a bad reporter. And and all they're doing is taking because he was on camera all the time. Yeah. Taking clips of the, the deranged, hateful, uh, homicidal shit he was doing. The, Incompetent the homicidal. Yes. Yeah. And just just playing them on social media for 30 seconds. This is he said, are you better off th- four years later? This is what he was doing four years ago. This is what that asshole was doing. That's all they're doing. And God bless and, him. For and doing that. yes, we're revisiting the trauma. Yeah. But you but we have to. We because have to remember the question it. came up. We have to yeah. remember how hard this was. Without and we survived it. Not everyone did. People in memory, my family did not. Without memory, there's no healing. You can't yeah. heal if you refuse to remember what actually happened. The trauma just lingers. Yeah. Now, finally, in Star Trek news. Oh. The theme for Star Trek First Contact was played at the flag raising ceremony at NATO in Brussels earlier this month for Sweden's accession. To the Alliance. Uh, I I just want to add to our news roundup that Lev Parnas, having served time in prison, for Rudy Giuliani is now settling all family business. Yeah. And uh, 
he released a video today or yesterday of uh, himself on the phone <laughs> with Victor Shokin, mm-hmm. the former prosecutor for Ukraine, and Rudy Giuliani. Rudy continuing to try to prop up a debunked story about, you know, Burisma and, and Hunter Biden and all that, and asking Shokin on the phone, this is on video, did they get a kickback? Did they get a bribe? And Shokin says, no. <laughs> And, you know, and this is just the tip of the iceberg com- from what Lev Parnas is putting out there now. Right. He's just he has provides. text messages. He has videos. He has phone call records. And the New York FBI, which is in was, you know, for the entire campaign in Rudy Giuliani's pocket, gave these Trump apparatchiks Hunter Biden's bank records. Think about that. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah, we've got his deposit here. We've got his deposit. We know his bank accounts because the FBI gave them to me. Right. Gave them to Lev Parnas while he was working for Rudy. Mm -hmm. So I'm not worried about Hunter Biden being able to get some satisfaction from these bozos in terms of suing them. No. He needs to sue the New York FBI office for for releasing his, his bank records. Yeah. I'm, it's mind blowing to a couple of rat fucking scumbags. Rat fucking scumbags because Ooh. Rudy, Rudy is our buddy. Scum, absolute scum. I won't say happy Holy Week, but happy spring to everyone. Yeah. And happy if you happy. if you celebrate Easter, we hope it's wonderful for you. Mm-hmm. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is Moon. <gasps> Moon is a reverse tuxedo, and Moon's human says, I never would have seen myself as a cat dad had it not been for Moon. Hmm. Or as she is called, Mama Moon. She made me love cats. Yeah. Now, isn't that a superpower? Mm -hmm. Moon is our internet kitty just in time for the quickly approaching eclipse the viewing of which is centered just north of us, I got to say, prices for travel to that area are triple what they normally are. It's ridiculous. You know, it's going to be so crowded. The roads are going to be just so crowded. Um, We're going to watch it on TV. (laughs) Um, But anyway, of course, Moon Eats Freshly Poured Cat Food, our fake sponsor. Whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store dreck, your cat will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh my lord, it's freshly poured. And you can visit Moon at our Facebook page or website. Such a beautiful kitty. Yeah. And you can send your internet kitty, dog, or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write to us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions. Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Please don't forget our gourmet coffee guidelines. I mean, we're not selling Bibles for 60 bucks, but if you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for, like yourself, for 5 bucks, buy one for us. This isn't charity. This is our job. And if you can spare five bucks a month, please do so. We really appreciate that. And you can make that happen at patreon.com forward slash pro left pod. Please also, if you can share our show on social media. And if you love this podcast, please get someone else to listen. I think they'll enjoy it too. And thank you so much for doing that. And leave a review, a rate and review our show wherever you listen. We'd appreciate yeah. that too. We do. Hey, Drift Class, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Oh, Blue Gal. The Internet Kitties say screw Shogun, Three Body Problem, and Tokyo Vice. The greatest show on right now is the Squirrel, Chipmunk, and Bird Variety Hour, live on the porch big screen. Let's think about living. Think about living. Let's think about loving. Think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the popping and the loving, loving, loving. Let's forget about the wine and the crying and the shooting and the dying and the fellow and the switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Professional F Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2024-25. GGBG Productions. Thank you, Drift Glass. Love you, Blue Gal. I love you, too. Bye. Bye.